Hey guys, so this is review video number four, I believe. Um, and I'm gonna go through, hopefully, between 10, 15 minutes here, the uh, four major cycles you need to know for how matter moves through the biosphere. So water, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus. So the water cycle here, and you know, we can go to our notes um, and uh, look at it this way too. Um, I'm gonna jump around between notes and what I have here. So. Basically, um, you got to think of the ways water uh, is used and how it's produced, basically. Um, so uh, in this picture here, it, it, it's more simple than the one I just had up there. But um, sun heats up water. Water evaporates from oceans, streams, rivers, lakes, ponds. It also transfer, right, transpiration occurs from uh, soil, from plants. So that's how water gets up in the atmosphere. And then also sublimation too from um, snow, but water gets back up in the atmosphere and then it precipitates snow or rain, for example. Um, and then obviously it gets into all of the water sources. Um, it can percolate and filter through to get to groundwater. It can run off and go into oceans, river streams, like pond. Plants can uptake that, right? Animals can drink it. Um, so you have different sources, different sinks. Um, and if you look at this picture here, it's a little bit more involved, but there's just a whole lot of evaporation and condensation, right? So, um, basically as long as you understand how water, when, when water comes on, comes down to the surface in the form of snow or rain or sleet or hail, whatever it is, where does it go? What does it do? Right? It can sit there and evaporate again. It can go into the ground and percolate. Plants can take it up. Animals can drink it. Obviously, we drink it from aquifers. Um, it can stay underground for a long time if no one has any access to it. Um, runoff can occur. Um, and then again, evaporation occurs, condensing, and don't forget transpiration, right, from plants um, and, and soil. So that is the cycle, essentially. All right. So, um, so let me look at my notes, make sure I'm not forgetting anything here. Um, yeah, so after precipitation, does one of three things, evaporate again, evaporate through transpiration, go into the soil, percolate in the groundwater, or runoff, all right? And oceans are obviously the biggest reservoir. The biggest sinks are humans, animals, and plants. Okay, so that's the water cycle. All right, carbon cycle. Okay, so we'll hit the notes first here. All right, so. Movement of carbon around the biosphere and, you know, this, this, it's a little too small. Maybe I'll go to my other picture here. Uh, but basically the gist of it is, is where, where are the big sources of carbon? Where are the reservoirs? Where are the sinks? Right? So, um, naturally you got photosynthesis and respiration happening, right? So when the sun's up, you got photosynthesis happening and you got your CO2 converted into sugars, but um, you know, when the sun goes down and at night, let's say respiration occurs, uh, from plants and animals also, um, respirate. So that happens as well. So that puts CO2 back in. So you got your photosynthesis respiration. You got your CO2 exchange between the, uh, ocean and the, um, air. Then you got some of that CO2 and here's a sink, right? Some of that CO2 gets trapped as sedimentation in, in calcium carbonate and precipitates into the water. And that's where the sed sedimentary rocks come from. Some of the um, CO2 is used in the ocean by consumers and producers, right? You can see the, the cycle here. Um, so producers produce that. Uh, um, so the producers, for example, using photosynthesis and then the consumers um, are doing the opposite decomposers. So you have um, certain bacteria that can decompose in water um, as well. And you can just see the, the difference between the arrows here. Consumers is putting the, the CO2 in, the producers are, are, are uh, putting the CO2 out there. Your decomposers can cause burial to occur. And that's how fossil fuel um, eventually after millions of years is created because some of the carbon is buried under, oops, what, what am I doing? Buried underneath there. Um, let's see here. Look at some of my notes. Um, okay. Good, good, good. Um, humans can extract that 
and then burn it extremely fast, whereas this cycle usually takes a very, very long time, right? So if we're taking fossil fuels out and burning them immediately, then that is very old carbon that is being introduced to the modern carbon, which is constantly being cycled. So that's why the big problem with introducing that to our environment. Um, obviously, combustion puts CO2 back in the atmosphere. Volcanoes put CO2 back in the atmosphere. So you know, again, understanding the relationship between what puts it in the air, right? Respiration, photosynthesis takes it out. Um, and then the exchange naturally with the air in the ocean, sedimentation traps the CO2, um, burial traps the, um, uh, sorry, sedimentation traps the carbon, burial traps the carbon. You have a natural um, balance between consumers, producers, and decomposers happening here without humans interfering. Um, and again, decomposers and producers here, same concept, part of taking the carbon out, putting the carbon back in. So um, that's a natural balance. But humans and anthropogenic activities, forest fires, also volcanoes, not necessarily uh, human cause forest fires. But um, anytime we burn fossil fuels or burn trees, um, you know, obviously we're increasing that CO2. Um, so, so let me make sure I'm not missing any of the big points there. Um, just the bottom line is without humans, the exchange between carbon in the atmosphere and carbon in the earth is fairly stable or steady state, as they call it. Um, carbon used in photosynthesis is returned to the soil. Decomposers release the carbon about as fast as it is added. Um, and then the slow addition of carbon to fossil fuels is about as slow as how the fossil fuels release it. So naturally you let earth do this on its own. It's fairly steady state, but with us taking it out, um, chopping down lots of trees, clear cutting, and then extracting fossil fuels, we're disrupting that balance. So, um, okay, there's the carbon cycle. And, uh, I can just show you this one again, quick here. So there's a lot of different arrows here, but what I like about it is it shows, um, you know, carbon dioxide exchange with the oxygen going to the atmosphere, coming into the oxygen. Photosynthesis is using the CO2, respiration is putting it back, burning, putting it back, um, decomposing and burning fossil fuels, putting it back. Um, we're burning or taking coal and gas out and burning it, obviously. Um, sediment, right? So the CO2 that is exchanged, it's in the ocean. It can be turned into sediment, calcium carbonate typically. Um, and then that can form rocks, which stays in the ground for a fairly long time. Um, and then again, that can turn into fossil fuels after millions of years. And then what am I missing here? Um, oh, the weathering and the runoff is just explaining how some of that soil and organic matter containing carbon can run off into the ocean that way as well. So as long as you understand there is a steady state with certain things like the exchange and photosynthesis respiration, and obviously anthropogenic activities is disrupting that and we're putting too much in the atmosphere, um, which actually will cause more of it to get exchanged in the ocean, which will decrease the pH and cause uh, ocean acidification as well. Okay, so there's the carbon cycle. All right, next on the list, um, we got the nitrogen cycle. Uh, nitrogen is a macro macronutrient. So is phosphorus. That's what we'll do next. So nitrogen is a big deal. It's a limiting nutrient as well. So it's available in lower quant quantities. So if we increase the amount of nitrogen with fertilizers, let's say, um, you're disrupting the balance of the nitrogen cycle. And there's, there's um, let's see, five main parts here. You got bacteria that fix it. So they take N2 from the air and they put it in the ground. So plants can use it, for example. Um, nitrification is the next one, the conversion of ammonia um, into NH4+, plus, then into NO2- minus and NO3-. Minus. That's what can be used by plants. Assimilation is when plants use that. Um, and then um, you have the mineralization process, where there's bacteria and um, fung fungi that break down organic matter and convert it to inorganic compounds. And I'll show you the picture. It's much easier than just reading this to you here. Um, and then eventually, yeah, I'll get to the picture, uh, it's put back into the air, right? So um, I can show you this, but I'll go to the other one as well. So nitrogen fixation. So you're taking the N N2 out, which no one can use. It's converted into ammonia first, then into NH4+, plus, and then there's bacteria that convert it into NO2 and NO3 that can really be used by producers, right? So that 
this is a decent way to see it. So N2 out of the air, all right, it's fixed by certain cyanobacteria as an example, can turn that into ammonia, which then will turn into NH4 plus ions in solution uh, in, the, in the soil. And then these two ions will be further produced and used by bacteria, sorry, produced by bacteria, then used by producers and plants. All right, then those plants will be decomposed and there's another source of nitrogen, um, but eventually denitrification occurs and then it goes back into the N2 uh, in the air. So let me show you that over here. Here's another way to see it. Um, N2, nitrogen fixation, there's bacteria, lightning can do it as well. Um, you get ammonia, NH3, but that gets converted into uh, NH4 plus, and then there's bacteria that can turn that into NO2 minus and NO3 minus. Plants take that and assimilate it, and then bacteria can now take that, those compounds and ions and put it back into N2. Um, that's a different type of bacteria. So that's another way to see it. And then here's another one here. So again, you got your nitrogen fixation, and then that fixation turns it into NH3 and NH4 plus. Then they turn it into NO, these bacteria turn it NO2 minus, NO3 minus. That can now be assimilated into plants, and then bacteria can take the excess NO3 minus that isn't used by plants, put it back in the atmosphere as N2. So again, the terms here, you got fixation, you got nitrification, or sorry, ammonification, ammonification, ammonification. Wow, you know me with words. Um, and then nitrification, so you got N2 turning into ammonia, then into NH4+, plus, then into NO2-, minus, NO3-, minus, that's the nitrification. Assimilation is when plants are using it, and then the bacteria that denitrifies it essentially and turns it back to N2 and that's your cycle and then in the process you have animals and plants dying and bacteria decomposing and when they do that they create more NH4 plus um, and that's important as well but again that's natural we start dumping fertilizer and runoff and it gets into the ground so now you're increasing your NO3 minus increasing your NO2 minus and it's disrupting this balance so the bacteria and the decomposers, they can't keep up. Um, so this this doesn't really work as well, obviously, right? So we end up with too much NO3 minus NO2 minus, too much nitrogen in the soil, and that is not a good thing. Um, so let's see, basically, yeah, what do I have? Fertilizers. Um, so it, there's not supposed to be a lot of nitrogen, right? So plants are supposed to have a certain amount of nitrogen and some species want a very low amount of it. So if we increase that concentration, um, you know, that can, that can kill plants um, and, it, and it harms the plants that even need a little bit of nitrogen. We're giving them too much. All right. Um, so that's the nitrogen cycle. Let me go to phosphorus, which is even more of a uh, um, uh, limiting um, nutrient. Okay, so phosphorus, there's even less of it. Why? Because it's trapped in rock pretty much. So I'm going to just show you the uh, picture I have here. So basically for a phosphorus cycle, um, you have phosphorus, phosphorus, phosphate in rocks. There's geological uplift. When they become exposed, they're weathering, and then that can run off um, and it gets into the water. Um, and then once it's weathered and, and starts to absorb into the um, ground, then plants can use it. Um, there are decomposers that also play a role here. Uh, give me one second here. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, so when organisms die, fungi and bacteria decompose the organic phosphorus and put it back into the mineral mineralized um, phosphate, right? So the, the, the decomposers can help with that phosphate the phosphorus and it gets it into these forms, the ions, phosphate ions, which um, can be absorbed as well. And that can leach and get into the water um, that way besides um, runoff. And if we add, to, again, too much fertilizer in farming, um, that will increase the phosphorus um, in the environment. And that's that's not a good thing because phosphorus is very limiting, very low amount because it is found in rocks and weathering takes a long time. So this is a slow process. Um, 
and um, you know the formation of new phosphorus, right? So if if these wet these rocks weather, it gets into the um, soil, decomposers break it down. Now it's in the ion form, and they get into the water, and eventually they um, form new sedimentary rocks, and eventually they get geologically uplifted. This takes a lo very long time, but when we start dumping fertilizer and increase the phosphorus concentration in the water and in the uh, soil you know, we're, we're really, really, really screwing up that balance. All right. Um, and, uh, algal blooms can, can be formed from phosphorus and nitrogen increases, um, in the water. Um, and see, last thing, what do I have here? Um, as the algae dies, large amounts of decomposition consumed, right? So as you get algal blooms and then when they die, decomposers try and break them down, but decomposers use oxygen when they do that and they make the water hypoxic, which creates dead zones, right? Nitrogen does the same thing, but phosphorus is a, is more harmful because it's an even lesser, there's an even, le even lesser amount of, of phosphorus in the environment. So those are the cycles. Again, the way it comes back, the whole cycle is you get those sedimentary rocks with phosphorus and eventually they come out of the ground and are weathered. All right. So that was kind of a long review video, but it covers all those cycles. All right. That's it.